Brent, I suppose uh, pre-season halfway, or thereabouts, the, the break there. And how have you assessed where everyone's at, considering what you wanted to implement at the start? I think we're pretty close. I think we're almost exactly where we thought we hoped to be. Um, there's been a lot of work on the game plan fundamentals, and obviously this time of year a lot of work goes into uh, the strength and conditioning side of it. So uh, I know it's obviously a bit of a cliche, but um, you know we're in a, we're in a pretty good spot. You know we're. Um, I hear a lot of, I sort of cringe when I sometimes hear other clubs who have finished outside of the eight the year before talk about, um, you know, you're reaching PBs and stuff, but we're quietly confident we're in a spot now where we, uh, we probably thought we'd be. The physical side, I think the grappling and the boxing, all that sort of thing you've introduced, are you starting to see the benefits of that, you think, on the track? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're not trying to become better boxers or better wrestlers, but we're just trying to release a bit of that inner uh, aggression, and we've certainly seen that. We've probably had to pull it back a little bit, the players have... Um, have really eaten it up, you know. They've been desperate to uh, to show that they uh, they want to play, and they're desperate, and that's probably what we were looking for from it. So, yeah, we couldn't be happier so far with that. Have you noticed the difference from when you first stepped in to now with that aggression, Sam? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll, the players have a fantastic attitude. They're actually a good group to coach because they just do whatever you say, which is great. Um, been really pleased with their, uh, I guess, dedication to getting the best out of themselves and. And so far, they haven't really put a foot wrong. You know, there's been a couple of times when, like I said, we've had to almost pull the players back because uh, they've almost been too aggressive, which is a great spot for us to be in. Um, I just wish there wasn't a Christmas break, you know, because I want to keep that momentum rolling along, and I'm really confident that we're going to uh, that we're going to improve. So you just hope that the boys come back uh, uh, fit and in great shape, ready for um, ready for January. How's the uh, players reacted to um, boxing with Sid? It's good, yeah. They've, um, like I said, we're, not, we're not trying to make them better boxers. It's just about releasing that that inner aggression, and it's sort of more about to uh, the player that, that cops a hit actually stepping back and coming back for more. And some players are really good at it. You know, some some players have been fantastic at, at dishing it out. But I like the ones that get hit and then come back for more. That's what I've been really impressed with. And we've got some players who can't box uh, and have copped a few whacks, but uh, they just keep coming back. And that's something that I think we. Uh, will uh, come out of our culture, I think, is uh, you get hit, you just get back up. Has it been good for Richard Tambling's confidence? Um, he's been one that's been pretty good, yeah. He's had a, he's had a good summer, he's had a, a good pre-Christmas phase and uh, hasn't missed too many sessions. So from um, from Richard's point of view, he's had a good uh, pre-Christmas period and as I mentioned before, hopefully those boys come back with the, that really steely resolve that they want to uh, improve again in January. Who have seen the tougher units that, uh, that don't mind get take the hit and get back up? Well, the guys I've been really impressed with, um, I think the guys have bought into the club, you know, Lewis, Lewis Johnson, Josh Jenkins, Tom Lynch, those boys are just desperate to play. They're the ones, those three in particular that we traded for, uh, doing everything they can to, to, to make that round one side and um, they're probably the three boys, you know, coming from outside of this group that have, um, that have set a really good example. We saw Tom Harley out there today, um, he had a bit of a chat with you, looking at the sheet, that's something we can expect to see a little bit more next year or is it just a one off thing? No, one off. Um, Tom's just in Adelaide to see his family, but it was good to catch up. And um, you know, the the football, uh, I guess you, that, that sort of friendships and whatever you develop through footy. Um, I saw a few of our boys too looking over and said, "Oh, yeah, has Tom got something to do with us?" But uh, he was just calling through and pretty keen to see how we're going. I think he's heard the whispers like everyone else that we're training well and the boys are in good shape. So he just wanted to come and have a look for himself. And yeah, good to see him. Was he Brilliant. offering up a drill for you? Or? Uh, I was showing him a few drills that we were doing and just getting his opinion about what he thought. But um, one comment that he did make is, is that the game's continually evolving, you know, and he was amazed, uh, I think, to see us doing so many contested ball drills. Um, we certainly, uh, for this time of the year, we're, we're pretty well advanced in, in game-based training. So while I said we're trying to get the uh, game plan fundamentals coached, but at the same time, we're doing a lot of drills where we're putting players in game-like uh, environments, which is uh, which has been helpful. Bring we see a lot of body changes as well with guys, younger guys developing, and that. Uh, who are some of the guys perhaps that we can see a transformation? Uh, the biggest gains so far have been Sloan and um, McKay. Um, Sloan, I don't know whether he wants me to tell you, but he's plus four kilo, and uh, McKay something similar. We actually had a meeting the other day. We've we've ordered all our jumpers in for the next season, and most of them don't fit. So. I guess that's one thing for me, which is good. You know, those boys are bigger than what they were this time, last, or obviously last season. So, whether that makes you a better, better, foot, uh, better player, but at the same time, they've got the confidence because they've got the bigger, the, the bigger, stronger bodies, and hopefully that uh, 
enables us to play that sort of crash bang style that we're going to be looking for. Brady Smith, another one in that sort of group that looks like he's changed. Yeah, he's been very impressive too. He's one that, um, not that young players surprise you because their their um, their improvement curve is pretty steep, but. Yeah, he's one. When you see a photo of him this time last year and you see a photo of him now, um, you know, and his mum works here at the footy club, she doesn't recognise him on the, on the track. She came out to watch and she was blown away. She said, I can't find my son, and then he ran straight past her. So sometimes you, you, know, you see him every day, you don't notice the improvement, but um, yeah, I, think, uh, I think our supporters and members will notice uh, a sort of stronger, more developed side, hopefully in 2012. About two months here now, is there anyone that's really blown you away, exceeded your expectations on the track? Not one player, I'd hate to just name one, but we've seen improvement through the whole group and the guys that I've liked are those guys sort of age 20 to 24 or 23, you know, there's, there's a big group of those boys. We're actually going to be, round one next season when they bounce the ball, we'll have 30 players aged 23 or under. So we're going to be young, we're going to be a young team, we're going to be a young squad. Um, but like I said, with the improvement in that, in that group, you know, their improvement curve's going to be pretty steep, we yeah. hope so. How's Benny Dowd coming along? Uh, incredible. It's, it's hard to believe uh, how quickly that kid's improving, you know, and some of the jewels today, you know, he uh, didn't look out of place at all. So um, he's going to take small steps with improvement once the games start, but um, his application to training has been first class. Paddy Dangerfield was right up there with the time trial stuff early on. Uh, would you look, like to see a bit more in the midfield under you, Senior? Yeah, I think you'd expect um, not just uh, Paddy either, but there'll be a lot of guys who have been probably playing a lot as forwards will get little pinch hits in the midfield as well. And same with guys that have spent a lot of their footy career playing at half back, might spend more time on the wing, on ball, half forward. So I think the modern game shows you've got to rotate a lot and you've got to put players in, or they've got to have the ability to play different positions, you know. Um, Jimmy Bartell won the Norm Smith medal playing in the middle, on the wing, half back, centre half forward, you know, so you've got to be able to play a lot of different roles uh, in the modern game. Just with Paddy, have you been impressed with his aerobic capacity? Because everyone knows how explosive he can be, but I guess out there he certainly showed that he's got the aerobic side of things as well. Yeah, Paddy's an incredible athlete, you know, he's uh, got that speed and I think he went away uh, this uh, break and worked on his aerobic conditioning. Um, and as you saw today, you know, Van Berlo, McIntyre, Dangerfield were the ones up the front and we shouldn't forget about McIntyre either, you know, coming in as a rookie and making a real uh, strong uh, example today of, of how desperate he wants it. You know, I love those hungry dogs, the ones that haven't been picked up, you know, two or three years not in the draft and, and we just give them a rookie opportunity and uh, he was great today. Just blew them away in the running and then uh, trained the house down as well. So I love that, seeing those, those young kids, the rookies, the ones that want to push up and uh, succeed as well. Brendan, your other club, the Cats, you had lots of success having had a reserve side there. Is that something high on your priority to push you? Yeah, we'll just keep chipping away, yeah. I think um, the club is certainly on the agenda. It's something that we would love to have and, it's, um, you know, the reserve side is going to make us better as a football club and a football team. Uh, typically, the sides that have their own players go back and get coached by play, uh, coaches that are within the, the football club. Those are the ones that have a quicker improvement and the development of our younger kids, it's imperative that at some stage down the track we'll have it at a reserve side. So we understand it's a delicate issue, but at the same time, we'll, uh, I guess from my point of view, senior coach, I'd love to have it, but um, we're not going to shove it down anyone's throat just yet, but we'll slowly keep chipping away with them. Would you ideally like them to play for premiership points, or how we got formed? Don't really mind, Zach, I don't really mind at all. It's um, As long as we're getting our players eventually playing under um, our, our umbrella of uh, coaching and. Um, I think that's going to help the development and should help help our football club. So you sort of have one in development, coaches coach the two sides? Yeah, we'd have a reserves coach, yeah. yeah. But that's um, a little bit pie in the sky at the moment. We're, uh, we're still, like I said, we're still miles away from it. But there's some people working pretty hard behind the scenes just to ensure that one day it's a, we can make it a reality.